Good day and welcome to the Pomerantz Mentor brought to you by ProScan. Today's excerpt comes from our orthopedic knee evaluation where we focus specifically on challenges in interpretation and clinical management of meniscal tears and pathology. This is a 54-year-old woman with pain and stiffness in the knee. That is not a very specific history. I mean, where, where is the pain? Is it anterior pain? Is it posterior pain? Is it posterior medial pain? Does she have instability? Does she have clicking? I need more because this knee has multiple problems. We're not here to discuss the multiple problems, but clearly there's class four chondromalacia. There's a class two to three effusion with generalized distension of the capsule. There's some swelling of the skeleton in the intercondylar notch. And there is the phenomenon of meniscal pseudo extrusion. In other words, the meniscus, even with this patient lying on her back, is not really sitting within the line of the femur and the tibia. It's slightly displaced like toothpaste in a tube. Imagine what happens when she stands up. It's going to be squished all the way oh, out. Yeah. It is not really functioning. That's meniscal failure, tear or not. You know, it's a non-functioning structure. So getting in there and getting super aggressive with a structure that's not doing much anyway is something that should be really thought carefully about. And when might you go in there? You know, it's extruded and migrated somewhere where it's causing locking or painful clicking. But much short of that, going in there and fixing this or resecting it is probably fraught with danger. What do you think? Do you have any other opinions on meniscal failure and pseudo-extrusion before we drill into this case further? Yeah, w what are the orthopedic uh, physicians wh when we communicate meniscal failure, um, is it just mentioning tears or no tears, or you know, how does the meniscal failure, uh, what does that communicate to them as far as sure. managing? Well, in, in a case of meniscal failure, I mean, you really have to articulate what's failed. So sometimes the only thing that's failed is there's osteoarthritis, there is a meniscus, there isn't any severe tear, but it's just not sitting inside, I inside the hoop stress of the femur and the tibia. So that's a form of failure. Then the meniscus could be macerated and torn with or without those findings. That's a form of failure, no very high grade tear. And then there is meniscal chondral failure, which is the most common, where the meniscus is pseudo extruded, it's somewhat irregular and macerated, and there's extensive chondromalacia. So we like to segregate those three. The other part of your question though, which, which is a social one, and a very nuanced one is how do the clinicians receive this message? You know, meniscal failure, it, it's almost as if you're saying to them, well, it's over, there's not a lot you can do about it except considering a knee replacement, don't go fixing that meniscus. And initially, and I'm talking more than five years ago, phone calls would be made, explanations would be given, but as time has gone on, the concept of meniscal failure has entered the orthopedic literature. So orthopedic surgeons and sports medicine doctors really understand the concept of hoop stress failure, meniscal displacement, and they know now that that description means what we just discussed. They like a little more detail with it, but they're not offended by it. I haven't gotten pushback on the concept of meniscal failure for many years. But I did spend some time, along with the orthopedic literature, educating those doctors. So let's keep rolling on this case and move on to the back, because it illustrates perhaps not the dominant finding in this case, but an interesting one. The meniscus is normally anchored in the back by root ligaments. So the meniscus comes back, you've got the posterior horn body junction, the posterior horn, the deep posterior horn, some people call this the meniscus root, 
and then it should have a line going right to the surface of the tibia called the root ligament. There's the root ligament on the other side, contiguous. That one's a little shorter. This one's a little longer. But right here is a defect in the root ligament. And the tissue underneath it further supports that it's a real finding. There has been some abnormal friction event, some type of posterior impingement, perhaps a knee flexion, with the femoral condyle compressing this tissue, wearing away the root ligament and finally tearing it. For sure, that is going to be a contributory force that is allowing the meniscus to displace, not just by stretching, but also by the tear itself. Do you have any other comments on meniscal anchoring, roots, root ligaments, any other thoughts that might be helpful to our viewers? So just in the language on this case, it seems like would this be a case of pseudo extrusion or true extrusion given that one of the anchoring structures is actually damaged? And then if, if it is extrusion, does that then imply uh, an orthopedic intervention? Another very nuanced, sophisticated question. But that's why you're here. Um, if we look at the meniscus, it is displaced. And yes, when you rupture the root ligaments and you rupture the attachments, now the meniscus is free to flip all the way up along the femur, go down the tibia, go forward, go backward, even break off and go into the back of the knee. So at this point, I would take the conservative route. It is sitting exactly where the degenerated meniscus would normally sit, right at the joint line. It's not, it's not going to the Arctic. It's not going to the Antarctic. It's kind of staying right in the middle. So I would weave it together thus. I would say that the meniscus is predominantly pseudo-extruded due to osteoarthritis and meniscocapsular laxity, although one of the attachments namely the posterior tibial root ligament has a small non-gapped tear and I'd leave it at that. Now if I saw this thing starting to float somewhere I'd start to get more aggressive in my discussion of this finding.